Um, so moving more into the watery realm, um, at the Sioux Locks tour stop, um, uh, we learned uh, about the, um, uh, some of the technologies, the innovations that are happening there to help keep the maritime trade and the navigation in the Sioux Locks um, working. Um, so Dennis, I'm wondering, given your experience there, if you could um, help us with better understanding um, you know, what is, what is the perspective uh, from uh, navigation, um, from maritime trade, um, we're using these technologies and, and you know, what are some things that we should be thinking about? So I'll give a couple different perspectives on that. Uh, <laughs> from the course perspective, we had a challenge maybe, maybe five, 10 years ago where we discovered some of the steel and the anchorages. These are the things that hold up the gates to the lock. Uh, and it had some structural issues to it. That, that's addressed now. Uh, but at the time, it was assessed that there was a 7% chance of failure you know, on any given year. That is not within the margin of operation uh, for, for us. Um, what strikes me, though, is we didn't know about it for a number of years. Right? We had a pre-existing condition that I think some of the sensors we've already described and doing it smarter as we go to build new infrastructure up there, can we apply some of the new technologies that we have so we're not surprised by it again in 30 years? Let's do it smarter. From another perspective, I have heard from uh, ship captains and the shipping industry the challenges of coming into the locks. It, it may not be obvious, and I don't know if anyone's been up there and, and seen a ship go off course and strike a wall or uh, strike another ship. It doesn't happen every day, but it happens periodically. And the reason is there are some really tricky currents and hydraulics uh, flowing through there. Uh, can we employ some sensors that provide real-time feedback to the captains that allow them to make that adjustment approaching the lock? I think that technology exists. It sounds uh, very reasonable. Closer to home, closer here in Detroit, we have uh, ice dam conditions that pop up periodically, especially along Lake St. Clair, uh, where, where we get the ice floating down, creating a dam, and flooding coastal communities. And we have come up with techniques to sense the difference in the lake levels uh, in Lake Huron and then downstream in Lake St. Clair. Uh, and, and where we see a, a disparity, you see an anomaly, you're able to get the Coast Guard out there to, to clear it out. It reduces it a little bit. Um, but I, I think, again, there's probably an opportunity in areas like that to, to do better, do more real time. Uh, last year was, was one of particular challenge. Um, so, so those are three that jump to mind. Uh, another, and I'm unsure what what the problem that needs solving here is, but those ships have sensors on them right now. So access to the data, again, that we've described already. How are we using the information that's already out there to make smarter decisions? Maybe we're making uh, fewer delays at the port. Maybe we're making uh, um, a more refined schedule of ships coming through the locks or through the other connecting channels, the Detroit River and such. 